Okay, come together, O sons of Benjamin, out of the midst of Jerusalem, sound the shofar in Tokia, to Tekoi, how do you pronounce it? Tekoa. And hoist a flag over Beth Cherim, for evil can be espised from the north and a major disaster. Okay, that's my version. Noah? Um, O ye children of Benjamin, gather yourselves to flee out of the midst of Yerushalayim and blow the trumpet in Tekoa and set up a sign of fire in Bet HaKerem, Bet HaKerem, for evil appeareth out of the north in great destruction. Hmm. What is mine? Mine says, O you children of Benjamin, gather yourselves to flee from the midst of Jerusalem. Blow the trumpet in Tekoa and set up a signal fire in Beth HaKerem, for disaster appears out of the north and great destruction. <coughs> I have likened the daughter of Zion to a lovely and delicate woman. That's 6 verse 2. <coughs> oh, mine has that all under 1. Okay, so... Okay. Mine has that <coughs> 6 verse 2. Um, Excuse me. There's so many different things, there's so many different versions, there's so many different readings, and how do you know what is right? And so, as Christians, we go to church and we get preached to, and uh, I'm going to ask you to share about Hosea later. Um, we get preached to and, and we accept that these learned men who have studied um, theology are teaching us correctly. And are they? Well, um, I, I'm, I'm going to set this exam today and I'll ask the question, John 3.16, what does it say? Do you read that for us, please? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Okay, so the question here is do you believe in, in Jesus? Do you believe in Yeshua? You do? You do? Okay. But what does it mean? Okay, because... If we read James 2 verse 19. Yes, for, for you believe that there is one God. Well done. So yeah. do the demons believe and they tremble. Yes. <coughs> and we studied the word tremble the other day. Mm. Mm. The word tremble in Hebrew, now this is Greek, so you must understand there's a bit of a difference. But in, in Hebrew, the word tremble is the same word as sand. <coughs> and so, but I also looked, because I questioned is the word believe different in James and in John? But it's not. It's the same word, pisteo. Mm. Okay, and I might be pronouncing that wrong, but go and look it up. Mm. So you said something very interesting to me about believing. Um, mm. So read that to so me. So before I read this, you know, <coughs> we went on the hot air balloon thing. Sorry, yes. what was the James scripture again? 219. 219. Now the next one that we're going to be doing is skydiving. Okay. Mm -hmm. Although Trevor says he'll be a very willing onlooker. <laughs> he will not participate. I like my feet on the ground. <laughs> so anyway, so I have this analogy for you to try and... Because for me in that, in that scripture, John 3.16, the key word that we need to look at is believe. Mm. Right? So you're going to go skydiving. And the skydiving instructor says to you... <coughs> um, do you believe in parachutes? You say, yes, I believe it'll work. He says, okay, do you believe in me? He says, yes, I believe you're the instructor, you know what you're doing. He says, okay, let's go, let's jump. He's like, whoa, 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 just a second. He's like, don't worry, I'm going to be there with you. I'm going to jump with you, I'll be with you every, every meter of the way. He's like, no, hang on a sec, what, what happens if I mess up? And I turn our descent into a death spiral. He says, relax, I've got this, I'll fix it. Mm. I'll save your life. Mm. He says, well, you know, I know you're going to try, but just to be safe, I'll rather stay here on the ground. I'll rather sit this one out. He says, so what, you don't, you don't trust me? Apparently not. So there's a big difference between mm. mentally agreeing mm. to something and actually... Mm. Climbing in the wheelbarrow. <coughs> Having faith taking and belief, the leap of faith. taking the leap. So that's why that word believe 
Mm. It's important to understand what it means. Mm. That it's not it's not a noun, it's an actively happening continuous thing. It's a verb. Mm. Mm. And it's also important <coughs> to understand the context in which that particular portion of scripture was written mm. and what preceded it. Mm. But what, what I read to you this morning was, and I follow this carefully, mm. listen carefully. Please excuse me. <coughs> I'll wait. Thank you. I know you believe, you understand what you think I said, but I'm not sure you realize that what you heard is not what I meant. Mm -hmm. Because many make the assumption that God always means what they think He means, rather mm -hmm. than what He said He meant. Mm -hmm. Now, the analogy that I've given many times <coughs> is when I did a rally, mm. and I followed the road map completely and I got totally lost, mm. and I was reading it the wrong way. Mm. And so, are we reading what God meant, or are we reading what we would like Him to have meant? Mm. You know, this is the question. Mm. So, the, the question, so, so I always ask this question, what is a Christian? Because, well, what is a Christian? What is a Christian? What is a Christian? <laughs> Pass the question it's, on. Pass <laughs> <laughs> it back to you. Right, right, what do you think? <laughs> um, I think it's someone that actively believes in God. And, shows his faith and his belief and lives according to what the Bible is teaching us or telling us but also trying to understand like you say what God is saying not what we want to read out of it mm -hmm. so it's not just this airy fairy proclamation of mm. believing because if you look at that scripture John 3 16 um, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him yeah. shall not perish but have everlasting life. It's not just saying, I believe that God is, that Jesus is the son of God. Mm. That's an acknowledgement <coughs> of a, <coughs> a <coughs> of a, I want to I say like a geneal genealogical Mm. genetic thing but I mean God is spirit mm. but you know what I'm mm. saying mm. Um, <clears throat> it's far more than that it's you can't just say the sinner's prayer mm. and think now I'm safe I'm going mm. to heaven I can continue with my life and I'm good I'm okay mm. and many people are I mean where in the <coughs> Bible does it say you need to say the sinner's prayer Mm. It doesn't. It doesn't. No. So, <clears throat> because it also goes on to speak about um, the the water and the spirit. Yes. Straight after that, with Nicodemus. Well, we're going to get to that. Okay. Um, so, like Roy said, it's far more. It's not just a mental thing, and it's not just something where you do it, where you acknowledge that as a fact. It's actually walking it out daily, mm. practicing it, being mm. obedient to the the commands, to the instructions. So I would say a Christian is someone who is in relationship with the Lord. Mm. Because if you are in relationship with Him, true and proper relationship, then you will do all of those things. Mm. Having that connection with So them. like a marriage? Yes. Okay. <coughs> so obviously we'll get to, to that as well. And you mentioned commandments, keeping his commandments, but then Paul writes and says we're not under the law, and I'm, I'm going to get to that too in this video. And, you know, if you don't understand what the scriptures are saying, where do you go to? Google. Mm. So I went to Google. I was looking for a verse, and, and I went to Google, and it, it's got this thing called God Questions. Mm. Mm -hmm. And God Questions um, gave me a, a few, um, a theological explanation, okay? And we'll get to that too. But I, I don't want to jump ahead now. So the, the question is, what is a Christian? And you say you're a Christian. 
Um, as James 2 verse 19 says, you say you're a Christian, you believe that there's one God. Good. But just remember that demons also believe that. That's not going to get them to heaven. So now mm. we've got to just work through this thing and see, because Yeshua said, was it Yeshua? Uh, God sent his only son that whoever believed in him would <coughs> perish but have everlasting life. Mm. Was, it, was it Yeshua or was it John? Mm. Um, you go check that up if you've got a red letter Bible it's easy it's mm. read it was Yeshua but the question really is is that enough and what does the word actually believe you know believe what does the, the word believe actually mean <coughs> and <clears throat> the word in my um, Greek uh, what do they call it Con um, concord Concordance. Uh, concordance. Yeah, concordance. Yeah. Says to adhere to, to cling to, to be glued to. Mm. Okay. To trust in, What's to rely upon. You getting it from again? I want to check. I want to look at the word. Um, I looked on my, my, my sword. John 316. 316. You're yeah. still using that one. Okay. Um, <coughs> so now we've got to, we got to say, so. Do you, you gave that analogy of skydiver. Um, Yeshua says, so these are the things that I want you to do. I want you to follow my word. And you say, oh, of course, yes, I believe in you. Um, but then it comes to the feasts or it comes to eating pork. And you say, oh, no, 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 not that part. I believe in the other part, so not that part. Uh, don't uh, smoke. No, 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 not that part. I believe in the other parts. Don't, don't get tattoos. No, not that one. Okay? Mm -hmm. Which ones do you believe in? Okay, there's 613 commandments. Oh, but we're not under the law. We're under grace. Mm -hmm. We'll get to that. So, the the real question is, and, and this is this is like really sore on my heart, Okay? Mm. There are hundreds of thousands of people who say they are Christians. <coughs> are they believers or believers? Mm. Okay, do they do they adhere to or do they say they adhere to? Mm. And so, uh, my brother gave a, a, um, a devotion and he was saying, you know, excuse <coughs> me, I beg your pardon. Uh, he was saying, you know, the churches teach this thing of coming into the throne room of grace. Um, but they don't teach about the wrath of God. God's this loving God, he's cuddly, um, probably, you know, his hair so so fun to play with while you cuddle, you know. But they don't talk about the wrath of God. And uh, and Hebrews of God. 10 and the fear of God. Mm. Hebrews 10 says it is a fearful thing to fall mm. into the hands of the living God. Mm. I like the Afrikaans version. This is mm. mm. And so the Afrikaans just sounds more aggressive. <laughs> okay. Um, I like the Afrikaans <coughs> language. But <clears throat> the, the question that I'm asking you today, and if you share this video, send it to people that, that you want <coughs> to see in heaven. If you love someone, tell them the truth. Mm. Tell them that if they don't repent, they're going to hell. You know? um, tell them to walk with God, because that's the way to get into heaven. Amos 3 verse 1 and 2 says, Can two walk together unless they are agreed? Anyway, I divert. Let's go to John 3, verse 3. You want to read that for me? <coughs> Start from verse 1. Yes. He was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. 
But hold on a second. You cannot see the kingdom of God. Is that eternal life? Whoever believes in me shall not perish but have everlasting life. Unless a person is born again. Now hang on. Are we adding to that believing now? Is this now is this now something more that we've got to do? We've got to believe, but we've also got to be born again. Well, it's explaining what that means. So I think it's I think it's a clarification, yes. Um, but I also think that we must have a look at the word um, born again. <coughs> now, you want to have a look at that word again. I will. I've just, sorry, I finally found your first word, the um, believed. Yes, okay. Is so, this in the Hebrew? Because we were looking at No, it this is in the Greek, <coughs> the original Greek. So you must know the, the Greek the pistio. is... Yes, <coughs> so pistio. It's to think, to be true, to be persuaded of, to credit, place confidence in. Mm. So, and it comes from um, used in the New Testament of the conviction and trust to which a man is impelled by a certain inner and higher prerogative and law of soul. Um, and it comes from the word pistis, which is conviction of the truth of anything. So I also saw, because then they take persuasion. And then that the comes from... Emet. Okay, the but Hebrew so word emet, which is mm. truth. Yeah. Pistis comes from pitho, which is to convince or persuade, to pacify or consolate. Mm. So, <clears throat> it's like you've got to persuade yourself. Okay. Mm. <clears throat> to be persuaded. Mm. To suffer oneself to be persuaded. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we go to born Sorry, again. So now you're looking born again, which is in John. <coughs> Roy, right, you tell us while now is looking that up. What do you think about being born again? John 3 verse 3. three. It carries on, by the way. It says you must be born of the flesh and of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Mm. So now it's going further. We see believe, born again. Water and Spirit. Born of the water and Spirit. That will so let's <laughs> remind ourselves again. What does water represent? The Word. The Word. And the Spirit is the Holy Ruch. Spirit. Ruh. Uh, and if we have a look at the menorah, the menorah represents the word. Mm. But on top of the word, there's the oil, which represents <coughs> the Holy Spirit. <coughs> and then there's the fire, which also represents the Holy Spirit. But the fire lights up and illuminates. Okay, so you can think about that. But that, that we've now gone a little bit past that, so we want to get back to born, born again. again. So, I think the born again part is where you give your life over to Jesus and you start a personal relationship with God. Okay. So that you are in the spirit with Him. You've got that proper relationship with Him. Not so, just I looked at a cross reference. Yeah, I looked at a cross reference and it speaks about when we accept Christ, we are our new creation. Yes. That's, that's what you're saying. Mm. Okay. But there's so much depth in the Word, and this is what I'm trying to teach people. I really want you to understand that. Hashem, when he wrote the word, didn't just choose words mm. randomly. Randomly, um, he chose words very specifically. Because we're born into a body of sin, mm. so we're born. <coughs> when we're born, we are born into separation from God, mm. and we have to the way to come to connect with Him, mm. to <coughs> enter into into relationship with Him. To awaken our spirits to Him mm. is to accept Him as our Savior, to accept the work that He did for us on the cross, and to enter into a relationship with Him. So our spirit that is previously dead in sin mm. now becomes alive in Christ because of what He did. And enter into a relationship and connect with Him. Yes. And the word connect in, in Hebrew is tzavet, and that's the root word for... <coughs> Um, Instruction, mitzvot. Okay. Mm. Did you find anathon? 
the Hebrew word for again is uh, uh, the Greek word for the the word again is anathon. Anothen. Yeah. A new over again from above from the first. There we go. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, so from above. Upwards on high. A new. Um, of things which come from heaven or God. Ah, things which come from heaven or God. Mm. So. <coughs> He's not talking about a physical rebirth, go get back in, and he explained that to Nicodemus, but we don't seem to understand this again part. Okay, and the again part is to be born from above, to be born from, and again, the water and the Holy Spirit. The water is the word. It's, it's the instructions. It's the, it's the clarity of how we do things. Mm. It's the, you... <coughs> Do things righteously or unrighteously? How do we do things? Okay. And we did a whole series on being righteous because God is righteous. Being holy because God is holy. So it is used normally of men who fathered children. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but then it's to be born, to be begotten. It's also woman giving birth to children. So it's to procreate figuratively to regenerate in the sense of to in a Jewish sense of one who brings others over to his way of life so converting mm. of God making Christ his son of God making men his son <coughs> through faith in Christ's work so it's not physically it can represent physically having a child a son but it's also you making someone else your son mm. So, <clears throat> the whole thing is pointing to Christ. Because if we look at what he said in verse 4, <coughs> he says, now. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Then it goes on to, for God so loved the world. So, so what happened in the desert? So right back, we see that the Israelites were <coughs> being uh, um, idolaters mm. and were not following God. So he sent all these serpents to bite them. And then he told Moses to make a snake out of bronze and to put it on a pole. Mm. And he instructed all mm -hmm. the people to look upon the pole, look up on the pole, and they would be healed. They mm. would be spared the death of the sting of mm. the snake's poison. So we go back. What happened mm. in the Garden of Eden? Who was it that brought sin and destruction? The snake. The snake. Mm. And then the snake gets put up <coughs> on the pole because that is their physical, it's like a symbol that they are spared from their physical death. Mm. But it's a foreshadowing of Christ because when Christ was nailed to the cross, <coughs> he took all our sin mm. and he took mm. the penalty of death away mm. because when we believe in the work of Christ on the cross mm. we receive the gift of everlasting life mm. of eternity with mm. him mm. so I, I never realized this before that what God was showing through Moses' action of the serpent on the pole was actually mm. a foreshadowing of Christ yeah <coughs> so everything and, and they had to look up they had to leave their tent they had to walk they had to come before it, mm. and they had to actually turn their eyes heavenward, acknowledge mm. that that is where the source comes from. <coughs> so, <coughs> everything in the Tanakh, the Old Testament, refers to Christ. Mm. And whenever we read there, <coughs> and, and I don't have all the answers, so I'm going to I'm going to pose a question for you. I'm not going to give you an answer because I don't know the answer. But David was busy dying, right? And what did his servants do? Do you know what his servants did? Do you know? Do you know? They brought a young virgin to him that he may get heat. Okay. Look at Troy's So, go read it. It's in the Bible. Okay. And the question is, everything in the Bible has a foreshadowing of Christ. 
And so, go and think about it. I just <coughs> thought of something now. The Holy Spirit probably revealed it to me. But just go and think about that. A young virgin. <laughs> Christ is coming back for a... Bride and spotless. Okay, anyway. Let's, let's just um, leave that to you to think about. That's incredible. <clears throat> it's just mind-blowing. The word again... <coughs> Anathon, anathen, whatever it died that's pronounced, to be born from above. Jeremiah 1 verse 5, we've done this. Um, Hashim has this meeting with um, Jeremiah. And he says to him, but um, listen, um, before you were born, I knew you, I met with you. Um, and I ordained you and predestined you and all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, Before he was born, God had a meeting with him. Uh, Go and read it. It, It's there. Go and read it. Be born from above. So, before you were born, Roy, you were in God's presence and he was having a chat with you. Then he said to you, I'm going to send you down to earth and you're going to go live there. You won't remember this meeting, but the the aim for your earthly living is to reconnect with me. Because we were connected to him before. Because we were, again. Uh, Re. Yeah. So, uh, now if I say to you again. It means it happened before. It means it happened before. When did it happen before? Before you were born. Mm. You must be born again. It, this meeting that you had, go back to that. Mm. Go back to that connection with Hashem. So, <coughs> believe, reconnect, be born of the water, the Word, and of the Spirit. Mm. And so, this is how... <coughs> Hashem has put his scriptures, the gospels, gospels mean the good news, together. It's the good news. And then, um, then I, I, want, I want to share, so, <coughs> there, there's more to it, but I want to, sh- I want to share with you from Hosea 5 verse 1. You shared that with me this morning, so I, I'm going <coughs> to ask you to do that. We, I'm busy reading through us here, and I posed some questions on our group. Um, because I, what I love doing is I love to provoke people to think. Okay, so the question you posted was from verse 11, where you said, Ephraim is oppressed and broken in judgment because he willingly walked after the commandment. Now, just think about this. If I was to say the commandments, what am I talking about? The mitzvot. The Ten Commandments. Well, the Ten Commandments or the 613. So he willingly walked after the commandments, but God's angry with him. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't make a lot of sense to me, because uh, maybe then uh, Paul is right in saying that we are no longer under the law, we are under the grace, the grace of God. Mm -hmm. I say that's wrong, but so let's see... What is, what is Hosea 5? Okay, so the, the, we obviously got cut there. Um, the word is not mitzvot, it's tor. Tor, and it means a human statuette as an antithesis, so the opposite um, to the word for the commandments of God. So the world that we're living in is filled with people who are doing exactly the same thing that Ephraim did, walking after man's commandments. They do so in the so-called forms of baptism they preach and practice in the non-observance of the Lord's Supper on the Lord's Day, in the names, doctrines and theologies of their churches, in the immoralities, drunkenness, adulteries, violence and countless other ways. As the Lord himself declared, in vain they do worship me, teaching the doctrines Teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. That's Matthew 15, verse 9. So those are not the commandments of God. Those are Mm. the commandments of men. Men. But then what was interesting was, if you go back to the beginning of Hosea 5, in verse 1, he speaks about, it's God speaking 
through Hosea mm. to the prophets, to the priests. Mm. And he's saying that um, they've set a snare and a trap in... Um, That's in verse 1, eh? Yes. Okay. In um, the two mountains. I'll take you now. That uh, one is not used. Tabor and Mizpah. Mm. Okay. So... <coughs> In that, when they set up the northern kingdom, are you listening? Because mm -hmm. it's very interesting. And they established the northern empire. Jeroboam was very concerned that the people would go back to worshipping God. And that they would go back to Jerusalem mm -hmm. to worship. Mm -hmm. Because he knew that when they went back to Jerusalem, it meant that they were going back to celebrate the feasts. Mm -hmm. Because wherever they were, they needed to go back to Jerusalem to mm -hmm. do the feasts. So what he got them to do was in certain centers, Dan and Bethel, he set up these golden altars mm -hmm. for them to worship at as an alternative to rather do that instead of going to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. But then what he did was on these two big mountains, he set people to keep a watch for when people walked past, mm -hmm. they knew that they were then going to Jerusalem mm -hmm. to celebrate the feast. The feast. Mm -hmm which was their way of connecting <coughs> with God, mm. which was their way of demonstrating their obedience to following His instructions. Mm. They didn't want them to do that because they knew that if they celebrated the feasts, they were <coughs> following His commandments, they were being obedient to Him, and their relationship, their connection with Him was being strengthened. Mm. So they knew if they removed that as an opportunity, they wouldn't follow God. Mm. So they set up these watchmen, on top of these two high mountains. And as the people walked past, they would actually go and trap them and ensnare them and kill them mm. to prohibit mm. them from going to Jerusalem, participating in the feasts and <coughs> worshipping. Mm. So do you then think that the feasts <coughs> are important for us as Christians? We're not Jews. <laughs> It says it's a perpetual feast, yes. and it says that we are grafted in. Yes, okay. Mm. So, I had, I had a pastor ask me, why, why would we <coughs> want to be in the feasts? We're not Jews. And so, I was a bit lazy. I, just, I, did, I used that Google thing. <laughs> and Google doesn't always give the right answers. Uh, and I told you I'm going to read something to you. Uh, Google doesn't always give the right answers, but Yeshua and Paul celebrated all the feasts. They partook of all the feasts. Go look it up. <coughs> so if they did it, and we follow Christ, why are we not doing it? Why are we doing Easter eggs instead of Passover? Why are we doing Christmas, which is not one of the feasts? And uh, you know what, we can debate that. People are going to say, but Jesus was born. He wasn't born on the 25th, but why don't we just celebrate his birthday and worship him? Well, because that's the commandments of men. It's not what he said. We just derive this from ourselves. There's a thing that says, I will not attend your feasts. Mm. So, I think that the feasts are one of the ways in which we connect with Yeshua mm. because the feasts all point to him mm. the feast of Passover mm. is Christ's death resurrection a feast of unleavened bread <coughs> and we'll we'll do a study on that someday again and then the feast of Shavuot which has just passed um, and then the feast of the end of the, or the beginning of the year the feast of Rosh Hashanah mm. Or Yom Kippur and Sukkot. and Sukkot. So those feasts all point to our relationship and the events of Yeshua. So John 14 verse 15. Question. If you love me, or those who love me are those who obey my Commandments. Which ones? Which commandments? All of them. All of them. In the New Testament, 
sorry, that's from John. John 14, verse 15. How many commandments do you think are in the New Testament? <coughs> Any idea? Any idea? I'll tell you. A thousand and fifty. One thousand and fifty. But it's never been studied. I haven't also done a study on it. But in the Torah, which means commandments or instructions, Torah means instructions, Torah has a numerical value of 613, and there are 613 commandments mm -hmm. in the Torah. When Yeshua said, those who love me are those who obey my mm -hmm. commandments, was the New Testament written when he said that? Could you go buy a New Testament Bible whilst Jesus had just said no. that. No. Mm -hmm. no. So what was he referring to? Because it wasn't yet written. The Old Testament commandments. He was written. He was referring to the Torah. Mm. Which is what Christ preached about and from. And everything that he did comes <coughs> from the Torah. Because he would go and sit in the synagogues and the shuls and that's where they were Correct. teaching. Correct. Where the, he was teaching, yeah. Mm. Mm. So... He has a, I looked up, <coughs> we're no longer under the law, we're <coughs> under grace. I looked up and I got to a thing on, on Google, got questions. What does it mean that Christians are no longer under the law? Now this is what was written. So okay. this is Galatians 5.18. I'm not telling you this is correct. I'm telling you this is what got questions, gave us an answer, or part of the, the answer. This does not mean that Christians must be lawless, as some advocate today. A teaching called anti antinomianism, antinomianism. Rather, it means that we are free from the Mosaic law. The Mosaic law is the six hundred and thirteen commandments, the feasts, um, etc., et the dietary requirements, all of those things. <laughs> so, this guy is saying, excuse the dog, he's, she's just getting a little excited. Probably because she's angry about this <laughs> misconception. <laughs> <Yeah>. So, <clears throat> Yeshua says, if you love me, you'll obey my commandments. The Mosaic law is not Moses' <clears throat> law. It, it's not he decided this is a good thing. It was what was given to him by Ruach to write down because it was God's laws. Okay? And it's God's feasts. If you go and read Leviticus, in no way does it say, these are the feasts of the Jews. It says, these are my feasts, God says. So, I want for you to go and watch this video. I want you to go and consider, <coughs> are you a Christian? Who follows the word or you a Christian who determines what you want to follow so when it says in Galatians that if you're led by the Spirit you're not under the law ah so Galatians 5 verse 18 um, the very interesting I am not a okay the dogs now a little bit more excited. I don't see anyone there. Okay. <clears throat> so, <laughs> a little heart attack there. Yes. Okay, so, please excuse the dog. Um, if you <coughs> leave her outside, then she barks anyway. Um, more, than more than if she's inside. So, I... I had a look at the word law in Galatians 5 verse 18 and the, the word is used is nomos mm -hmm. which would appear to mean man's laws very much the same as what we discussed earlier in uh, Hosea which was the commandments being man's commandments mm -hmm. not God's commandments. Mm -hmm. What do you see there now? Um. Anything established, anything received by usage, a customer law, a command of any law whatsoever, a law or rule producing a state approved of God, 
by the observance of which is approved of God, a precept or injunction, the rule of action prescribed by reason of the Mosaic law, the Christian religion, the law demanding faith, the moral instruction given by Christ, the name of the more important part, the Pentateuch, is put for the entire collection of the sacred books of the Old Testament. So it's from a primary <coughs> word, nemo, which is to parcel out, especially food or grazing to animals. Is this the Galatians? Yeah. yeah. So in that description <coughs> of the word nomos, it also establishes that it can mean the laws of Moses. But, it, but at the same time, it establishes that it can be um, Christian moral law given by Christ. So if people use that scripture, then you don't have to love your fellow man. Because then you're then excluding you that as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. But here's a question. So, okay. How do you pick and choose? Do you know that Paul was the most learned man of his time? He studied under Gamaliel. Mm. He, he knew the Torah by like the back of his hand, and yet he seems to be a little bit dully. Because, yeah, he says we're not under this law, and in um, Romans 3.31, he says, Shall we abolish the law through faith? Certainly not. We establish the law. Mm. Hang on a second, is this the same guy? <coughs> you know what I'm saying? There's a contradiction here, isn't there? Mm. So we need to understand that in Galatians 5, he's not referring to the Torah. He's referring to the man-made laws, much the same as Hosea. And as we study Christ, Yeshua, we find that he came, there are many parables about this, how the, the landowner sent his servants, the prophets, to go and collect what was his, his honor, his worship, his mitzvot, okay? And the people rejected them and they killed them, etc., etc. All the prophets, most of the prophets, a lot of the prophets were killed. They were rejected. They were thrown out. So he said, well, hold on, I'll send my son mm. to go and get what is mine. Mm. He never said, so I'm going to send my son to go and change the law mm. or make a different requirement. Or a new one. Or a new one. So how do we then, again, come to that thing, <coughs> believe, decide on what we actually want to believe? Mm. We, we, we think we know what he meant, but what we think he meant is not what he meant at all. Mm. So, the importance of studying the Word <coughs> is the importance of actually doing a cross-reference and finding out what is going on. Paul also writes, by the way, and he says, How shall we know sin apart from the law? Mm. So, the law then defines what is sin. Mm. How do you not sin you know, when you go into battle, I'm not a, I'm not a military strategist, but if you go into battle, you need to know how your enemy operates. <coughs> if you want to live with Christ, you need to know how to do this. Mm -hmm. I always give the analogy of marriage because our relationship with Christ is a, is a marriage relationship. And when you married me, uh, the scripture teaches that I must love you to the point of that I will die for you as Christ died for the church. Am I right? <coughs> what must you do submit. as the one? You must submit. How do you submit to me unless you know my instructions? Mm. Okay. My instructions are uh, breakfast in bed. <laughs> <day and night>. <laughs> 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 what is what is God's instructions? Mm. Don't eat certain things. Be holy. Be different. Mm. Don't put tattoos all over your body. Don't um, don't do things that I don't like. <coughs> it's in the Tanakh. Mm. And so, 
we've we've we studying Jeremiah because Jeremiah teaches us how the Israelites fell out of God's favor. Mm. Has the church fallen out of God's favor? There was another scripture that I also shared from Hosea. I just want to see if I can find it. Um, <coughs> and it just reminds me so much of the church in its current state. I'll put my glasses on then I can maybe see it. Uh, okay, I'm not going to find it. Anyway, <clears throat> we we walk in the commandments of men, and we feel comfortable that we're Christians, <coughs> and we think that we know His commandments. You need to say that thing again. Okay. What thing? I don't know what thing. Yeah. So, and then we believe <coughs> and we are comfortable that the day that I die, I'm going to heaven. But the question <coughs> really is, are you born again? Are you born from a higher place? Mm. I know you believe you understand what you think I said, but I'm not sure you realize that what you heard is not what I meant. Many make the assumption that God always means what they think He means rather than what He said He meant. I really want to encourage you to share the video. I want to encourage you to go and study the video and go and search out what God meant. Mm. Amen. Okay. <clears throat>